All right, thanks. Thanks for the introduction. I'm very glad to be at this year's uh, DMAX. Uh, so my name is Adam, and as already introduced, I'm going to be talking about why your encoder is so slow. So just as a short introduction, I work at Fraunhof IHHI, and for those of you who don't know, Fraunhof IHHI has like a real uh, long history of uh, you know, uh, video technology research. We developed a lot of uh, very important video technologies, uh, you know, real breakthroughs in the, in the research, including you know, the, uh, the relationship between QP and Lambda in the RD theory, the Kabak, the hierarchical group of pictures, GOP in its original meaning, you know, many other major contributions to H264, 5, 6, and of course, over the last few years, VPN and VPDEC are um, VVC implementations. About myself, I'm a head of video coding systems group at HHI. I joined for the VVC development a few years back uh, and contributed a little bit of technology to VVC, starting with, you know, partitioning, and, uh, but most notably the software. And then the software, we decided to take it up a notch uh, and we, you know, we created it into actual uh, usable uh, implementations of VVC, VPN and VVDEC. That's why, you know, I really have this, uh, this view over VVC from the technology development to implementations. Uh, all right, let's look at the short history of video coding. Uh, I guess we already saw uh, a real exhaustive history of video coding today in the morning. But, you know, digital video, the real, um, the real success story begins with MPEG-2, right? And we have ABC followed by uh, HVC and now VVC. And with each iteration, we get uh, added um, compression efficiency, right? But how do we add the compression efficiency? We just make everything more complex. Uh, and you know, I, today I wanna talk about this complexity. So uh, before I dive into the details, let's look how the encoder actually works, right? So the, the the task of an encoder is to find a bitstream that conforms to a specific standard and represents your video optimally, you know, with a size limit. And you know, of course, the encoder only has to find the flags that are actually being signaled, right? Uh, most of the encoders do like a forward-only search, which means, you know, from this big, big task of finding a full bitstream, it's actually being subdivided into finding frames and then blocks within those frames. And mostly it's just forward-only, so we don't look back on the decisions that has be, have been already made mostly, I mean, there are approaches. Uh, so how does it work? Basically for each block, we would find a few prediction candidates and for each prediction candidates, we would try to find like the uh, quantization. So we take the residual and we perform usually like a rate distortion optimized quantization, evaluate the cost and just select the optimum. And from there on, we move on to the next block. So uh, let's look at HVC. And my first conjecture I want to make here is in HVC. Most of the search that is done is actually pretty easy. So most of the flex that need to be derived uh, are, you know, they can be derived fairly easy. Uh, on the right there is the distribution of bits between different syntax elements in HVC for typical bit streams. And for in red there, I marked the syntax elements that actually need like an exhaustive search. And now let's look at the two biggest chunkster. So first we have the residuals, right? We, how do we derive a residual? We take the prediction, we subtract it from the original, and bam, that's the residual. We do the rounding plus minus one uh, for each uh, coefficient. We maybe also test the zero, but most of the possibilities are not even looked at. And then we have motion vectors, right? The second biggest chunk. And Motion vectors are also kind of easy to find, right? We can do gradient descent, we can do like uh, multi-scale approaches, some pyramid-based approaches. So, you know, most of, the, uh, most of the bits, flux that you need to signal, fairly easy to find, right? Trivial, not really trivial, but uh, as I'm gonna show you in a moment, um, it gets tougher. Because there are two notable exceptions, it's partitioning and merge, and today I wanna concentrate on merge. <clears throat> so what is merge? Uh, the idea of merge is when you derive the motion for a specific block, you just copy it from one of the neighboring blocks. How does this work? You would uh, signal a flag that you're doing merge, and then you would signal which uh, candidate you want to take. And you signal it as an index from a, uh, from a list. And the, the issue there is the index is not differentiable. So how do you do your search, right? You basically have to do an exhaustive search. You can do some heuristics, but there is no easy way to like derive it, derive the optimal candidate. And from HVC, we go to VVC. 
on the <laughs> on the right there, you can see like the, the scope of all the inter tools, predictive tools that are available in VVC. Uh, with gray, I show what is not merged. And with orange, I show you what has already been there in HVC. All the rest is BBC merge. So you see it has been really extended a lot. And you know, we have different tools. For example, uh, geometric partitioning mode, which, lends you, uh, which lets you blend two different uh, merge candidates together, which you know, increases the number of possibilities. Then we have uh, MMVD, which is like merge with motion vector difference. And you know, when you think about it, merge with motion vector difference isn't this like motion vector coding with, uh, you know, with a motion predictor. <laughs> the thing here is the motion vector difference is signaled by an index in the lookup table. So again, it's not differentiable. You know, then we have tools like um, mixing, intra, prediction, and a merge candidate. So overall, the full syntax allows more, allows more than a thousand modes. I cannot really you know, tell the exact number because it's kind of hard to derive with all the restrictions. And the task truth is it's still non-differentiable, which means like the domain and the codomain, there is no relation. It just index indices and numerations. And another task truth is, you know, this is all candidates that are derived from a local neighborhood or from a temporal neighborhood, which means they are all kind of good. Uh, the differences in the cost, in the optimality are marginal. So you kind of need the exhaustive search um, to have the full efficiency, right? Uh, and then on top of that, we have many other non-differentiable, uh, non like purely syntax-based intertools. And here I come to the second con uh, conjecture, right? Uh, we know VVC is more complex than HVC, both on decoder and encoder. And the thing is, the decoding complexity, it's actually causing VVC to be faster and not slower. It's those syntax-based tools that, uh, that cause VVC to be slow. Right when we look at this algorithmic complexity, which means like stuff that is really in the spec that you know it's hard to process because it takes a lot of steps, like decoder, side motion refinement, new loop filters, uh, improved signal processing, new transforms. In our VB encoder, all of those are already enabled in the faster and fast preset. And then when you look at the other preset and you know the tools that are like syntactic sure, syntax based, we enable those later in medium, slow, or even slower or also in faster and faster, but in a very, very reduced uh, configuration. But they are still required for maximal efficiency. So now, how do we know when to enable which tools? Well, we did the test. We basically this, do this like uh, large-scale optimization of all encoder, uh, encoder options, which enables you know which tools we actually use, which strategy we use to search through those tools, the tool configuration, like for example, number of merge candidates, and we, of course, may optimize for minimal runtime and maximal gain. And this results in a Pareto set, which is like a, a approximation of a convex hull of the optimal working points. And there we can uh, set the presets along this curve. So let's look at those presets. Uh, on the right there, there is a um, short description. And I would like you to look at, uh, at the two things, the green one, implicit tools, and the uh, italic one, the signalic-based tools. So when we look at faster, we basically have most of those implicit tools, right? The tools that have additional signal processing, but don't require search because there is no flex to signal. Um, the same goes for fast when we would slowly start uh, putting in also those signaling based tools. But I want to mention like affine as a signaling based tools, but it's, it's different. It's like an exception to the rule because the signaling is actually differentiable and you can signal very complex motion models with really not so, much, uh, not so much signaling with just a few parameters. And then when we go to medium, uh, slow and slower, you know, then we start adding those uh, signaling based tools, right? Because this, uh, this is where we need them to achieve the maximum efficiency. Now, what does this uh, boil down to? Well, when you look at speed ups versus the uh, reference software and the bitrate overheads, when you, when you look at the jump from faster to medium, like in a 10x complexity increase, we get like 40% improvement, right? And then from medium to slower, we also have a 10x complexity increase, but only 12% improvement, right? Because this is where, we, where we're using those marginal gains. You know, this is where we have to resort to this exhaustive search through those signaling-based tools. All right, to conclude, 
the complexity is a complex problem, right? And you always have to differentiate between like this algorithmic versus search complexity, which means like how hard are the actual signal processing algorithms, but also, you know, within the option space of the of the um, tool, how far, how hard is it to find the best signaling to actually include in my bitstream, right? And you know, there are different uh, encoder optimization potentials. So we have like we can improve the implementation, we can do assembly, we're going to learn later how to. You know, and this basically produces the same bitstream. It gives you a speed up of 2x, 4x, 10x, maybe. You can use parallelization depending, you know, on how many cores you have. Uh, and, you know, the more parallelization, probably the more loss you're going to get. So this is not exactly lossless. And then you can have improved search, which is always lossy because you're working, you know, with those trade-offs. But here, the potential is basically limitless, right? You can go for 10x, 100, 1,000x speed up, but of course at a cost. And you know, to, to finish off, VBC does require more uh, thorough search than HVC, just because of this uh, design principle, you know, of, of like using enumerations that are very good for the uh, you know compression performance, but hard to deal with on the encoder side. All right, that's it. Thank you. Mm -hmm.